This show is produced by the Harwood Podcast Network. Hey there, I'm Cameron Harris. We love making this show available to you free of charge, and you can help keep it that way by making a contribution to our Karma Jar or by becoming one of our sponsors. To learn more, visit our website. Hey there, everyone, and welcome to episode number 42 of SketchUp, a 3D toolbox. Now, today we're going to continue our series on modeling terrain using the sandbox tools in SketchUp. Last time we learned how to make a grid, but today we're going to learn how to do the really fun stuff, warping and distorting it to make it look like hills, valleys, and ground cover. Let's get right into it. Now in our last episode, we started modeling our terrain for this back part of our backyard. And to do that, what we started doing was we built this big grid here uh, using uh, one of the sandbox tools called From Scratch. Now if you didn't see that episode, or you've, or you've forgotten how to do this part, go back and watch that episode real quick and just brush up on it so you know how to make this special grid. But now that we have this grid, we're ready to start making the actual terrain. And the way we do that, we kind of played around with this tool a little bit in the last episode, but we're going to go into much more detail this time. Uh, the Smooth tool. So once you've got this grid, what you do is you go up into the Tools menu, and then you go into the Sandbox tools here. Make sure you have the Sandbox tools enabled. We talked about how to do that in the last episode as well. And choose Smooth. Now once you've got the Smooth tool selected, there's a couple things you'll notice. First of all, the Smooth tool only works on these special grids. Now you could model these grids from scratch, but it's much easier to do it using the special grid tool. But you notice if we move the uh, cursor off of that, we don't get any tool. We just get a regular cursor. It only works on those special grids. And if we zoom in a little bit closer, you'll notice that wherever our cursor snaps to, these little points here, we get that kind of red circular outline. And that is basically an outline telling us what, you know, how far out the Smooth tool is going to affect. Because the Smooth tool, what makes the Smooth tool different from, say, the Move tool, like we could, you know, select a line here, switch to the Move tool, and push this up and down. And you can see that it is affecting things. We are essentially making a small hill. If you, we go down here, you can see that it is actually affecting the terrain. But you'll notice that it's only affecting things up until the next straight line. It's only affecting these faces in this zone right here. Wh what we want to do is we might want to affect more than just those, you know, seven or eight faces. We may want to affect the whole thing and make it much smoother than this. And that's where the Smooth tool comes in because the Smooth tool, switch back to the Smooth tool, th what happens with the Smooth tool is although it can work the same way as the Move tool, what's different is that we can affect how far out the Smooth tool affects. So, for example, at, at this default, it works very similarly to the Move tool. Not very interesting. But, you'll notice that down in our Dimensions box, it now says Radius. And that Radius is affecting how far out the Smooth tool will affect faces. And that also affects how wide out this uh, red line around our cursor is. So if we change the Radius to maybe 3 feet instead of just a foot, you can see that our red outline gets much bigger. And now if we click in here somewhere, it's affecting things at a much wider range. You can see it's not just affecting those you know, eight uh, faces that are towards the center of where we clicked, it's affecting things three feet in either direction out. And as such, you get a much smoother effect. And the wider out you go, the more smooth the effect becomes. Like let's say we went to an eight foot radius, and you can see that's actually bigger than uh, our grid, but it doesn't matter. As long as we click somewhere in the grid, the radius can be however big we want it, and you can see it's now affecting a whole bunch of these things. And uh, you also notice we get a bunch of those little uh, yellow squares at certain points throughout the grid, and those points are telling us what faces are being affected. And you can see that towards the center, the squares are very large. That means that those faces are going to be affected the most as we drag up and down. Uh, as we get further out from that origin point where we originally clicked, the squares get smaller and smaller, and that means they're going to be affected less and less until finally they aren't affected at all. So that's the way the Smooth tool works. And as you're clicking and dragging, you can offset these up, make a hill, or down to make more of like a, 
uh, hole uh, a certain amount. You see that when we start clicking and dragging, the dimensions box changes to say offset instead of radius. So now we could say, okay, raise this up two feet, enter in two feet, and now we've just made this uh, two feet higher than it originally was at the center. The other points, right at the center, it's two feet higher, but as we get further and further out from the center, it gets lower and lower until we're back down to our original height. So that's the way the smooth tool works, and you can do this you know, multiple times over. So we could click at a different point on the hill, push it down like that, and make a kind of interesting look. So you can get some really cool stuff out of this. But in our case, what we want to do, I'm going to go ahead and undo that so we get a flat grid. What we want to do isn't so much just making like a round hill or hole like this. We're interested in making a slightly different effect. We want to basically have this whole piece of grid raise up towards the back. We don't want to have it just be a circle, we want the whole thing. We don't want it to be rounded, we want it to be just a straight uh, uh, slope up towards the back. But you might, you know, at first glance, you might think that you can't do that with the Smooth Tool because the Smooth Tool always affects a circle. Well, that is not the case. Yes, the Smooth Tool will affect a circle by default. But that only happens if you don't have anything selected when you switch to the Smooth Tool. Let me show you what I mean. Let's say I wanted to, uh, let's say I select some lines here. I'll select these, this little cluster of lines right here, just randomly. I'm not really going for any particular effect. So let's say I've got all of these lines selected, right? If I go to the Smooth Tool now, you can see that the yellow dots have already appeared. I haven't clicked on anything, but because I had those lines selected, it autom when I switch to the Smooth Tool, it automatically chooses those lines as my center point. But it's not just a, a center point. All of those things, you can see as we push this up and up and up, those lines that I selected, it's not just a single point that is at the very top of the hill, those remain perfectly flat. Those are all being raised up the same amount instead of just a single point. And then that shape emanates out, uh, kind of a ripple effect down. Now, at first, you know, at first you might be thinking, okay, what, well, what, what difference does that really make? Well, let me show you a much more easier to see example. If I just use the selection tool and just select a whole bunch of these lines right here, and you don't need to have these be any, they can be any lines you want. Uh, it's best if they're connected, but they don't even have to be connected, really. And then you can just go up to the Tools, Sandbox, Smooth. So make sure you're in the Selection tool, make your selection, then switch to the Smooth tool. And now, as we pull this up, you can see that instead of a circular hill, we're making a more gradual slope. So you can see that's very different from, oh, say, I go back to the Smooth tool and don't select anything. Normally, we just get a round bump, but here we can affect, we can make the bump more oblong, we can make it a different shape, we can do whatever we want. And in this case, what we want is this kind of effect, but we want it to go all across this back part of our terrain. So to do that, I'm going to go ahead and undo. The first thing we want to do is go ahead and select all of the line segments along this back edge, and that's going to take a little bit of doing. Just switch to the selection tool and just keep on holding down the shift key and clicking on these lines, make sure you only get the back lines and done. So now I've got this entire back line here selected and now I can switch to the Smooth tool. Go up to Tools, Sandbox, Smooth and you can see now that rather than having just a single point that all of these yellow squares are emanating from, they're emanating from this entire back line. But one thing I do want to point out to you is that you'll notice that the ye and these yellow squares are really a nice guideline because you can see exactly how far out they're going to affect. So remember, these smallest yellow squares right here, I'll zoom in so you can see them a little bit better, those teeny little, little they're not even squares, more like dots, that's the last point that, 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 that our grid will be selected. So everything out from this point here, these last few uh, grid squares here, won't be affected at all. They'll remain perfectly flat. Well, that's a little bit of a problem because we want the, this to be affected across the whole thing. We don't want it to be sloped for most of it and then towards the uh, end right here, it goes flat. We don't want that. So what we're going to do to fix that is the radius 
still is in effect. Even though the radi even though we're selecting an entire line rather than a specific point, the radius tool, how far out the smooth tool will affect the grid, still applies. So you can see right now it's set to eight feet. Well, we need to increase that size a little bit. And this is one of the reasons that, remember when we were making our grid, we made the grid spacing exactly one foot. This is, this is another reason that I love to do that because we can go ahead and just visually, without having to switch to the tape measure tool and have to redo all of our selections, we can just visually count all these little squares here. So we can see that from this line at the far back, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Eleven feet this way, because we have eleven squares, each square is a foot, so we have eleven feet. Very easy to visually count that. So our radius, which is eight feet right now, it's three feet too shy. So we need to pump that up to eleven feet. Just go ahead and type in eleven feet. And now you can see that those yellow dots go all the way to the edge, and that's exactly what we want. So now what we can do is we can go ahead and click, and because we've already selected our origin point, it doesn't really matter where we click, but you know, somewhere in the vicinity of the line is fine. Go ahead and click once, and now we can raise this thing up, and you can see, if we go like really high, you can see the extreme effect, but we want this to be more subtle. We're only going to raise this maybe a foot. So let's go ahead and just type in one foot, hit enter, and we can deselect now. And now you can see if we look at it in profile like this, you can see we now have a, a very smooth, subtle curve here. So now we've got some very, very nice looking terrain with a very nice slope. This is really nice. Now, of course, there's one obvious problem with this, and that is the fact that it still looks like a big grid. We just got a whole bunch of triangles arranged like this. So the, the final step when you're working with terrain, once you've got it to where you like it, in this case, I'm, I'm pretty happy with where this is right now. The final step is to go ahead and select all of your terrain. So in this case, I'm just gonna go ahead and triple click on it. Select all of it, all the line segments and all the faces. And now we're going to smooth these out. So I'm going to, to do this, we've, we've kind of talked about this using the eraser tool and holding down the option key or the alt key and just kind of dragging and instead of erasing lines, smoothing them out. We talked about it when we were modeling our couch in our living room a while back. But of course, this would be a little bit trickier with the eraser tool because we would have to swipe, manually swipe over every single one of these lines. And there's probably hundreds if not thousands of them. So that would get a little bit cumbersome. So what we're going to do instead is we're going to right click, we're gonna use a little shortcut here, right click on it once we've gotten all of our line segments selected and choose soften or smooth edges. And when we do that, we get this little window up here. And I'll go ahead and drag it uh, over here so we can see it. You can see that we've got some options for smoothing and these only affect what you have selected. First of all, we have uh, the angle between normals. Now, basically, this is just a slider that has a bunch of degrees on it. And you can see if we drag it 1, 2, 3, 4, you know, up to 180 degrees. That affects how much, basically how intense you want to be with your smoothing. For example, if we were to set this to uh, 45 degrees, let's say, any angle, any, uh, any angle between two line segments, 45 degrees or under, uh, would be smoothed, but anything over, say like a 90 degree angle, would be left completely hard. Just drag this back and forth, and you can see actually that those line segments that are going across horizontally, as we kick it up to one degree, those line segments that uh, are a little bit, are one degree or less, go away. And then we kick it up to two degrees, even more. And three degrees is actually enough for those line segments. But that's just the horizontal ones. The ones that are running vertical and diagonal, those aren't being affected, even if we go all the way up to 180 degrees. Now, why is that? Well, that's because there's another option here at this little checkbox. You see, soften normals. Well, that's what these, you know, this angle slider does. But this other checkbox called soften coplanar. Now, that's basically a fancy word that means if you check this box, lines that are on the same plane will be softened. And why, th why exactly that's unchecked by default, I'm not entirely sure because you usually want to soften the coplanar, but if you have lines that just won't soften and won't disappear no matter how far with the slider you go, just check this box.
and now you can see, I'll go ahead and close the window, once we did that, you can see it now looks perfectly smooth. But if we zoom in, you can see it's still got that angle to it. It's still got that very nice subtle curve. We just don't see any of the uh, grid anymore. Now, don't fool yourself. This is The line segments are still there. For example, if we triple click somewhere on this thing, even though you know a single click, you select the entire face, double click, you select it and all of its surrounding line segments, that's nice. Go ahead and triple click on it. And when you triple click on it, you can see all of these lines that are being hidden. All of these dashed lines are, are still line segments. They're still there. They're just being softened and hidden uh, by that softening tool. But if we deselect, you can see it looks just fine. Just fine. And uh, we can even, uh, let's go ahead and switch to the bucket tool. And we can even add a texture to this. So like, let's go with some ground cover and just paint it on there. And now you can see that even you know after all the terrain stuff we've done and the smoothing of everything even though there are all these line segments underneath it you apply some texture to it and it looks just like a grassy hill so that is really quite fantastic and now what we can do is we can start modeling stuff on top of this which requires a little bit more thought than modeling on a perfectly flat face but it can certainly be done and that's what we're going to be covering in our future episodes well, I hope you found this episode useful. Terrain is a pretty interesting thing to work with in SketchUp, and now that we've built our terrain, we can start to work on modeling things on top of it, which we have a whole other set of tools that help us do that, but we'll save that for the next episode. Until then, be sure to visit our website at www.harwoodpodcast.com. I'll have the show notes for this episode and a place where you can download the lesson files. You can follow along using the same projects that I use. And if you have any questions or comments for me about the show, you can send me an email at Cameron at Harwood podcast.com. Until next time, I'll just say goodbye and good modeling.